Hello and a warm welcome back to the TNC podcast, your go-to Norwich City podcast. I know you're watching and listening going, yes, it is my go-to podcast. Chris, good to see you. Cheers. Lakens. Well, I thought I'd wear the t-shirt tonight as well, especially. We've got a special competition, haven't we? Yes, we do. If you go over to the Norwich City Twitter account, in fact, screw it, all of the Norwich City, Norwich City, Talk Talk Norwich Norwich City. City socials and share our podcast launch plug it's if pinned you will at the top um yeah it'll be pinned and shared everywhere tag talk north city etc etc and um, go and follow lakens and you will be entered in to a competition mm. to win a mixed case Oof. of one of these bad boys and how many are there in a mixed case 12 12 four of each and they're big old boys as well they are they? 500 um, mil. Just but as well as that, oh, it doesn't stop there. What? It doesn't stop there. Oh, no, 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 no. I will be picking four lucky winners to win a Ben Gibson signed player card. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stick that in your soccer box. Yeah, and smoke that. Yeah. But look, at the end of the day, you know, we need to get some optimism yeah, in the we room do. After, those, we do. Uh, after those results of late. So we thought we'd run a little competition. Pin post on Twitter, all the instructions there. You'd be a fool not to enter. And if you want 20% off, you just want to buy some, mm. link in the description. More yes. competitions coming your way. Chris, are you well? Yeah, I am. Are you? Yeah, I'm good. I was really tired last week. Oh. It was the Super Bowl, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, I remember that. No Super so you, Bowl this week. So you're feeling sharper this week? Yeah, feeling sharper. I'm a bit more on my toes. Are I've you? got a lot okay. of Americans coming for me. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm kind of, you know, dodging yeah, yeah, punches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So feeling, feeling fresh. So you're going to be giving me some more stick this week? No, I don't think so. A bit sharper? Uh, we'll see. I'm probably going to be like Amir Khan. We'll see. I do have... Wanting a fight, but not really giving much. Well, I do, I do have a couple of things to launch at you, but I won't do that just yet. I'll wait... Until um, until we've got the main um, Liverpool review oh. out of the way. Mm. Nearly. Nearly. We dared to dream for a little while, didn't Mate, we? Yeah, I thought it was iconic. Hello. I thought it was iconic. I was like on the floor slamming my hand and, and Becky thought I was in trouble because yeah. I was just like... Tapping out. I was in heaven. Like, I couldn't really believe what I was seeing. They do say that storms um, make you a bit crazy because Storm mm, Eunice was ripping through the country. Mm. Was it that or was it definitely the Liverpool game um, that sent you a bit schizo? No, to be fair, it was a Liverpool game. But as as Hux has said, never flick a Lions ball and we did. We did Single flick the Lions ball. ball. And we balls. did, didn't we? we? We just, it was a very cage atmosphere until then and it was the perfect storm, pardon the, 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 the Eunice pun. Um, Eunice. Eunice, uh, no, it was the perfect storm, wasn't it? Mm. You know, it was a bit of a quiet, as always, you know, this alleged famous atmosphere that's non-existent after, after you never walk alone. And um, what wasn't, was it? <laughs> what wasn't, was it? That's the one club we had left that still liked us. No, it's and fine. And now they're no, gone as well. Fine. No, 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 they'll admit that. The atmosphere was very cagey, slash average at best, until they scored. Do they need a drum? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, but no, look, uh, we expected to lose both that Man City and that Liverpool game. Mm. Um, we have, but I have to say, Jack, and maybe this will rub people up the wrong way, listening or watching, and that, to be fair, that wouldn't be any different to normal, would it? But um, I, I've come away from that actually feeling quite positive, which sounds really weird because it was another loss. We made the mistakes, etc., etc. But I actually... I looked at the way we were zipping that ball about in the first half mm. with energy, with endeavour, brave passes, not sideways merchants, not that bothered about, you know, keeping possession for possession's sake, actually trying to bring the game to Liverpool. We did. We obviously got in at half time. We then got on, we then went and nicked the goal mm. and, and really livened things up. Jurgen Klopp comes out saying that we were unpredictable, we were completely different, they had to adapt. And I was honestly really pleased with 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 the majority of the of, of the lads, I actually thought the first half performance was the better of the two halves. Mm. I thought, barring the the goal was in the second half, wasn't it? Yes, our goal. But I thought, barring that, which was a slightly lucky deflection, I think Dean Smith and I think he said it in his post match interviews. Lots to left to be desired with the defending. Yes, and I know you're up against Mane and Lucas Diaz and Salah. And to a certain extent, you have to just accept their quality. And Salah's goal in particular was a wonderful finish. 
but some of I mean acres of space for them to to work. I disagree. I disagree. I don't think Salah's goal was a wonderful finish. I have thought, you, I thought you, the composure. If, I think if Puki gets that chance, he doesn't score it. I think you can see the levels and quality. The uh, composure to put Angus Gunn on the floor. He's still got two defenders to beat to, to yeah, cross the line. Yeah, it's a very basic finish, though, apart from that. I, I the, don't know, the, Chris. The, the Diaz goal is, is, is a lovely, delicate chip, you know. And as you say, you know, if that falls to Puki, I'm not sure if he, if he does convert that. I think the Mane goal is the one. But to be fair, the Salah one has actually really pissed me off as well because... How can you... It was almost like a real positive about us bringing the game to Liverpool was that we mm. did put them on the back foot, we did scare them, we did create a cagey atmosphere, we did nick our goal, but then we were just so out of shape and, didn't, and yeah. if, in my opinion, didn't do the basics. How can you allow the opposition goalkeeper to get an assist? You know that you're coming up against Mane and Salah, you need to be watching those boys. Mm. You need to be sprinting back into position yeah. and making sure they cannot break when they get the goal kick. And by the way, Allison's done this time after time after time. So I do think that was poor defending. And Sargent doesn't track back for the Mane goal, which pissed me yes. off a treat. But also the defending of the two centre-backs was less to be desired as well. And then you could argue that the Angus for the first as well. It's 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 central at him as well. I think maybe Angus will be disappointed with that. Um, but then also to counteract that, made a couple of other good saves. So it, it felt quite. Yeah. It didn't feel like a Dean Smith team performance in that second half. What I mean by that is, is usually we're quite composed. Yeah. And and quite risk averse in many ways. And it felt even once we got the goal, we were fl- we were. Still really going, throwing men well, forward. Mate, going forwards. I, I really liked what I saw. I think it almost threw us off a little bit. The game. Yeah, maybe. Because first half, yeah, we were composed. We 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 defended on the whole quite well. Yeah. We got the goal, and then there was ten minutes between yeah. us scoring and, and us still leading, and then scoring their first, where it was just carnage. Mm. There were chances at either end. Yeah. We arguably should have got a second goal. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Well, definitely. I mean, and. And I know it's a talking point because there's been so many Twitter questions again, by the way. So thank you so much for those. Um, loving the interaction with this, with the TNC subscribers at the moment, mate. Um, but the big talking point is, of course, Pookie absolutely has to bury that chance. Do you think? We know. We all know that. He has to bury that chance. And the thing that frustrates me is I think... I think Pookie's been getting too much stick in recent weeks. I think a, I think a confident Pookie that's scoring goals every other week in the championship buries that. But for me, I think that was a sign of the fact that he wasn't himself. He's got to bury that chance, Jack. I think the thing is, though, Chris, is is you look at, let's say, Mo Salah, right? He will probably get six or seven chances in a game Mm -hmm. and will score one or two. Pookie's getting one. We expect him to finish it. It's an unfair Um, expectation. Not really. When it's a chance like that, you have to. It's not an expe- what do you mean an unfair expectation? Well, He's our striker. We're, we're, we're expecting Puki to have a 100% conversion rate. No, we're and, not. And, and, we're not. And we're, we're saying, not. well, it, it sounds like you are. And, it's, and Mo Salah, you know, everyone's, and he is one of the best players in the world. If he puts up a 20% shot conversion. You cannot compare those two players. Well, I'm, I'm comparing the, matter the, the situation. The, the matter of the fact, no. Puki you know, has one chance you know and misses it. it. This is it's actually, not the end of the this world. This is actually Let's complimentary. Let's create some more chances. I'm actually complimenting Puki, right? His legendary status and his ability to score goals for fun in the championship. And to be fair, doing damage last time in the Premier League under Farker as well. Yeah, but he's up against and Allison. He's not up against Burton's second choice goalkeeper mate, now, the, is mate, he? he would have scored. If he, hit the t- if he hits the target, I know it's a case of if, if Manta was Michael should have bollocks or whatever the, 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 the quote is. But Pookie must bury that. Everyone in the comment section will agree with me. Mm. Pookie must bury that chance. And 2-0... It's a it's it's then a completely different game, mm. and you would you would like to think we could have hung on for a little bit longer. Look, I I think Liverpool deserved to win the game, right? Yeah. But I have come away from it going, well, you know what? If we actually sort out our 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 defensive behaviours, if yeah. you will, I, I think we'll do well. We're not going to come up against Mane, Salah. Lucas, we're not going to come up against those boys. Uh, no, you know, no. players of that quality for the rest of the season, mm. arguably. Even against, you know, when Chelsea comes to town, Lukaku, out of form, mm. yeah? We're not going to come up against quality like that. So, for me, I've taken more positives from it from ne- from than negatives. The other thing that annoyed me slightly, Go on. and maybe if I was there, it would have been slightly different because you're caught up in the emotion slightly more. Yeah. People moaning, I think you were having a moan, at VAR. Why are we moaning about that? 
They had 30 shots on goal. It's not the point. It is the point. Why wouldn't you moan about it? Because it made no difference to the it's game. It's not about We're it not made... winning the no, game no, 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 if no, no, they no, no. are Jack, 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 Jack. And these, it's not about and these decisions difference. level out over the course of the season. We it's... have had some decisions go our way and we have some go against us. Do you know what? Fuck off. Why? Fuck off. That's utter bollocks. It's not though. No, 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 no. You no. are constantly you going understand. on about no, self-responsibility, no. taking responsibility. No, I'm not the blaming you're the. F- saying, you're suddenly blaming the FA, the corrupt FA, as you call them. They're not corrupt. No, Chris. no. We had six shots on no. goal. They had thirty. Right. Have you done? Seventy percent possession. I'm not to 30. saying VAR what would did you have expect? changed the game. I'm not saying that the VAR call would have changed the game. I'm also not saying that Allison should have been sent off. All I'm saying is, yet again, yet again, any VAR decision that's with a top, that's for a top six club against Norwich, it always goes their way. That is a, bla- it's, bla- it's blatant. And actually, do you know what? I'm just, you, no, let's what put, let's are you VAR, talking about? Let's VAR. You know what? Here's VAR. Let's tuck that away, yeah? What, what an absolute it? shambles of officiating. How can the linesman not see that, that Allison is literally, it, it's miles out. Anyway. I'm not blaming that decision for us losing the game. As I say, to repeat, Liverpool deserved to win the game. All I'm saying is, it should have been spotted. It would have slowed the game down. We would have had a free kick in a dangerous position. But, oh, no, 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 no. The Liverpool comeback was exactly what Sky Sports and, so, and, and the Premier League want. So, so are you talking about, or well, Alisson collects it supposedly outside of the box? No, no, no. Oh, come on. Don't use that word supposedly. Are you blind? Well, it's innocent. Do, do you want to borrow my glasses now? Um, is this the one that leads to the Allison assist? Uh, no, it's not. It's not. Okay. But it would have slowed the game down. We would have had a free kick in a very dangerous position. I'm not blaming that call. I'm just saying, yet again, VAR, Norwich versus one of the greedy six clubs. Oh, what a surprise. It goes their way. Every time. Every time. <laughs> you honestly believe that? I, I 100% believe it. Do you? 100%. I'm not saying it should have been a red. It just should have but been you, a foul. But you do realise It's a foul. Every, he's handled it outside the box. He's handled it outside the box. You do realise that every single club thinks... It's a foul. I sound like Mick Dennis now, that every single referee, every club thinks the officiating is against them. No. And often it's just level over the course of the season. But it's, Sometimes but it's you'll not, have it. But VAR is not level over the course of the season I think towards it is. any clubs outside the top six. I think it is. Okay. Facts I don't dis- care about feelings. Maybe our viewers can enlighten us. I disagree Let with us you know. strongly on that point. But apparently, and I have been put in my box about this, apparently Good. apparently, VAR was is actually nothing to do with, with that particular decision. Right. Which then goes back which then puts me back to my point. The fuck how's the bloody linesman not seen that? Well I think what we can agree on is VAR is a nonsense. But I don't agree with you in in a sense that it's somehow against Mate, Norwich how City. does the linesman not see that? I don't know. Well, I don't either. We all have, you know, slightly suspect eyes my, at times. No, no. My granddad could have seen that and he passed away. <laughs> it's a joke. Okay. Um, positives. Milo Rashica. Yes. He's good. Magic Milo. Yeah, he's good at football. Unbelievable. And, and, yeah, he's really getting me mm. going. Mm. He's really he's getting, getting quicker going. as well. Yeah, he is getting quicker. Yeah. But do you know what I found mad? That Dino came out saying that um, he was ill. Who? Milo. Was he? Did you not see that? So at half time, Milo. Overdosing on goals. Milo says, Gaffer, I'm unwell. What? He obviously, Dino, Dino, well, probably Shaky. He goes, Grow up, Milo. Shaky tells him to jog on. Yeah. But do you know what I like? Oh, go on. If that's an unwell Milo, goodness gracious me, imagine a healthy one. You wouldn't want to, would you? Do you know what I like about Milo? I love the fact that he sort of he drifts inside and ta- he takes yeah. two players out of the game. And then when you've got Sarji, I can't believe I'm calling Sarji, it's the Dino effect. Sarji making the opposite run. Yeah. Puki should be making another run as well. I like that. What's I'm, wrong with you I'm, and Puki loving, at the moment? No, what has he done? no, it's not. Puki, club legend, scores goals for some fun, will always respect him. All I'm saying is he missed a very, very, very good chance against Liverpool. Scored a very good goal against Crystal Palace. I'm not, so I'm, yeah, but it's, I'm not just going to ignore that. Like, it, it's worth bringing up, and it's not just me. Thousands of our viewers will agree that Pookie should have should have scored that. And actually, the comments that we've had on Twitter will indicate that it's a topic of conversation. We'll get to them shortly. Uh, let's counteract the positive with the negative. Yeah, Adam Eder. 
yeah. out for the season. Yeah, it's a shitter, isn't and it? And just as it felt like we were we were getting the system more than anything, yes. Alameda was a pivotal yes. part of that. The four-two-four, the Dean Smith yeah. effect. But if we play like that without Adam, and by the way, I'm genuinely gutted about Adam. I just think we really look am. so much more unbalanced without Adam in there. Mate, I, I re- do you know what? If we play like we play against Liverpool in the first half, every game for the rest of the season, we'll survive. Really? Yeah. If we play like we do in the first, if if we play like we did in the first, first half, half, going at the opposition, wings taking plays out of the game. The defense was, you know, I know it was a bit of a game of ping pong, and they had chances, right? Mm. But on the whole, we were defensively sound. You know, I, I, look, it's a massive loss, Ida, and and do you know what I'm really pleased about? And I've got, and I know this is the wrong type of motivation, but I'm pleased that I'm pleased that. It's provoked. It's provoked. Is that the right word? Yeah. Provoked. Well, it depends how you're going to use it, but it's a word. A response of respect. Okay. Because Adam Eder's had very little respect from a lot of Norwich fans. Well, he was poor. Saying he's not good enough. Games. He should be out on loan. Well, I think that he's was nowhere, valid until he's Dino nowhere came near. In. He's League One quality. I, I could go on. I right? think that was valid until Dino no, came. No, it's absolutely not valid. He hasn't he's scored always up had, until Dino came in. This is my opinion. This is Grant Holt's opinion. Yeah. When you've got play, you, when you've got club legends, strikers saying that Adam Eder is a quality player, you just shut up and you listen. Mm. Yeah, Adam Eder has got the talent and the and and the latent potential to be an awesome player, and I do feel for him because, as you say, he starts to bed into the team. He's making great runs. He's he's playing with confidence. He's linking up with Pookie, and then that injury the is the thing. I is couldn't work out. I couldn't even remember him going off injured. And then three days later, yeah. he's out for the season. So, oh, how's that happened? Uh, oh, well, was, was it not a training thing, though? No? I thought it was a training thing. It may thing. have been. He didn't go off injured. Um, well, that's what I thought. Do you know what, though? And I think this leads, and I know that a lot of people will want us to talk about this. It does make me question the recruitment. And I feel like this is going to mm. come. This topic of conversation is not going to go away. So, what you mean? Should we have and, signed a striker? Well, but it's not even. It's, it was so blatant, wasn't it? How did we yeah. not sign back up? Or at least bring someone into the club. I was having a Zach's in Pouring Down with the in-laws at the, at the weekend. And, um, what did you order? Tucking into a 12-ounce sirloin, actually. I oh, didn't nice. go for a burger, actually. 12-ounce sirloin. What's the steak like in Zach's? Um, yeah, it was right. I mean, I ordered a medium rare and it came medium, which is a bit disappointing. Oh, really? um, better than well done, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you You'll take, take it. it yeah. um, anyway, what was my point? My point was, well, okay, fine. We haven't Just say we haven't got the money. Will you bring back Jordan Hugill? And people will be saying, what, Chris? Jordan Hugill? Yeah. When we're that thin on the ground, you bring back Jordan Hugill. I, I don't understand. I because really don't we, understand how we've not done that. We we only have one striker. Now, we now have one recognised striker at the football club. And I'm not buying this whole sergeant can play up top thing. Like, come on. We know he can't. On his own, we know he can't. It's, it's a worry. If Pookie... Oh, it's, it's bad. News. I mean, you're right. Even with Adam Eden not being out for the rest of the season, that is the worst case. And we are now living through that. You do look at it, and it is Puki and Ida, and even then, it feels like you need strength. A lot of fans said especially, we need to sign a striker. Especially, and those, we were playing those two. It wasn't like yeah. we were just playing one at a time. Do you think Stuart Webber looked back I still at January? Think, in, I still with think. Regret? I still think we were weak. Without, I still think we were weak. Regardless, I still think that we didn't have. A striker that's going to be consistent. Okay, and, I, and by the way, I know we've not got the the money. We can't do the wage demands, or maybe even have the lure. Of, which like, this is tragic. Actually, we've got Burnley. a soccer ball, Chris. Come on. But look, Burnley have gone and signed that lad, that Dutch lad. Their course. Yeah. I didn't know. One of the richest men in Europe, or his family. Is. Oh really? Yeah. Oh well, there you go. Well, so he doesn't need the money then. No. Should have anyway, I know it's a bit of a shoulda, coulda, woulda, and it's like, well, yeah, obviously, Chris. You know, hindsight. You know, but it's true. I feel like. If we'd gone and signed a talismatic striker, out and out striker, mm. proven record, none of this bollocks potential thing, not signing a twelve year old striker from from you know Kazakhstan or something, go going and signing a proven goal scorer, we didn't. So I think we were weak up top anyway. I really do. And now adding to to, to that we've got injuries. Well the argument would be is that we 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 spread our um I don't know what the, the analogy I'm going to use here. We spread our icing quite thin in the summer and we had no icing left to spread. Yes. Mm. Do you think Stuart Webber will look back at the recruitment of recent windows with, with uh, an ounce of regret? Secretly, yes. 
I don't think he'll admit to it, but I think he probably will. I but, think, but, but, but then he's making big calls, isn't he? I think what's really... I think January was dead in the water because of the summer transfer window. The summer, the summer business had to work, and it's not worked. Well, Stuart obviously knew from the, from the get-go. I think it is public knowledge now that Stuart wasn't even in the country during January, or at least a portion of it. Yeah. So he knew that no signings were going to be coming in. Yeah. I mean, that seems interesting. Questionable. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I, 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 look, I, 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 I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know all of the details, but what I do know as a fan is that we absolutely had to bring in some sort of striker resource, whether that be a loan, putting a player back, or signing a free agent, or signing a actually signing a proper striker we had to I, I was uh, I was keen to read the Dean Smith School of Life book uh, recently right I listened to him on BBC Radio Norfolk and he said if I was an Norwich fan I, wouldn't, book, I wouldn't look at the league table and right. this was after the I think it was the Everton win yeah. and I thought Dean great idea yeah. not going to look at the table yeah. now we're on here yeah. chatting about how we're going to be going into the Europa League etc and I'm yeah. thinking we must be like 10th 11th yeah, yeah. we're 5 points adrift and we've played one game more than you. How's that suddenly oh. happened? I thought we were crazy. You know, and you know, now we're five points behind Newcastle. Yeah. And it's all looking really quite bleak. Do you know what was the biggest shitter about the weekend? Weirdly, not our loss. Mm. The other results were horrific. Burnley pumping Brighton. I mean, Brighton are Brighton. So and that, Watford that's... beating Villa. That's a big win away from yeah, home. Yeah, that's a big win for them. Big win. Why have Villa bottled that, by the way? God's sake. You know what really pisses They're me so off? so on the beach. It stinks. The, the amount of love that Villa, Southampton, Brighton and Palace get. And you know what? I'll throw and the, Brentford in. And let me 14th guess. 14th between 9th. And they've only had, what, one one win more than us? Brighton, I haven't... They've won about two games. They've won seven games this season, Brighton. We've won four. We're basically as good as them. All you hear, Graham Potter this, Graham Potter that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Their average, they've just been, they've just conceded three to Burnley, who but, up okay, until the weekend had scored seven, 16 goals, Chris. Do you know what I'm at? I, oh. and I know I'm, I'm right, here's. Villa! <laughs> let me pour. Villa! Let me pour petrol. Oh. On, let me pour petrol on my already very, very lit conspiracy fire. Yeah. This Burnley games in hand nonsense has really <laughs> fucked me right off. <laughs> it's really annoyed Why? me. When you're not rather points on the ball. So by the time so by the time Burnley play play their play their games, these teams are gonna be on the beach. Ah. Anyone mid table now, they've got to be looking anyone above what was it, Villa, maybe? They're safe. Mm -hmm. They're fine, they're gonna be fine. They're dead rubber games. Burnley will go and batter them. Fucking Burnley will batter because the, the game doesn't mean anything to them anymore. Mm. It's a joke. It's a joke how they've allowed Burnley to get to the point of having that many games in hand. And yes, I'm clutching at straws. And yes, we are at the point where we need some help from the teams around us. More and than at help. the moment, we, need we, ain't, get, we ain't getting yeah. it. They've, they've pulled out the, the resuscitator. And our goal difference is horrific, by the way. It's absolutely... He stinks. Burnley's is minus nine. Yeah. Ours is minus 38. It's, it, yeah. That's really bad, actually. And it does make me think that, so, and this is, I'll go back to my comments in the last podcast, that this is why I quite like what we did at Liverpool. Let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. 100%. Why not? Well, because we lose football matches doing that. Well, but we've got more of a chance of winning them than being sitting ducks playing passive sideways merchant football. Life was so much better before I looked at the league table. Don't look at the... I mean, I normally don't look at the league table until until Christmas, actually. That is a rule for me every every season. Well, that's gone. I really do want to make a shout out to Brandon Williams. Oh, OK. He was outstanding against Liverpool. He was yeah. absolutely brilliant. and He's growing into the season. And I think has put a nail in the coffin for Giannoulis in Norfolk which saddens me because of how good Dimmy is well let's not forget though Brandon Williams won't be here next season well I know but is Dimmy going to want to stay I hope on so the, on the premise that he'll play every game in the champ potentially providing that we're well we're not going to talk about game it's sad, it's sad what's happened to Dimmy um, yeah it is because I, st I, st I still am uh, of the belief that he's one of the finest players in the City Football Club yeah I don't disagree technically 
but I Brandon agree. has really grown into it. I thought I he was yeah, quite I agree. immature yeah. with some of his decision making towards the start of the no, season. No, and I and do you know what I do you know what I like it? If you're gonna go down, go down fighting. Mm. Go down. Go down swinging. Go down pulling someone's shirt. Yeah. Go down hacking someone out from behind. Mm. Go down taking a yellow card every single game until you get banned. Mm. Why the hell not? Good. It's about time I saw that fight in a yellow shirt and Brandon Williams gives me that. Genuinely though, part, part, away from the passion stuff, which I always always really enjoy. He's very, very good at defending. Very, very good. And I'm really, he's, he's become very assured, so much better positionally mm. and looked very comfortable away at Anfield. And to home in on the point I've already made, that's going to be the most difficult game now. Done. We are all of the games from now will be easier than what we've just done at Anfield. Mm. I, I like Brandon Williams going forwards as well. When he mm. gets the ball, that mm. that mm. gets me mm. going. Mm. Excites me. Yes, indeed. Hugely. What doesn't excite me is our midfield. Nah, yes. Agreed. We still don't we still don't know our best midfield. And that and that really worries me. <sighs> yeah. So the midfield three on, on Saturday, let me remind me myself of what it was. It was but I just Dino just won't I just think as long as Billy's got a pulse, he won't drop. So we have Billy, Billy Gilmore, Kenny McLean, and Matthias Norman. Yeah, Matthias is an absolute animal. Now we we, we can agree that Matthias Norman is, is yeah. very good. Yeah, I love Kenny McLean, but he's not Premier League quality. And Billy Gilmore is Premier League quality, but is is he the player you want in a relegation fight, Chris? I don't. I, I look. This is. I've said this before. I don't think he's a player for a relegation fight. No, I think it's it's all right at Chelsea because you're you're being it's not it's not I'm not even damning him like I genuinely think he's one of the most talented players we've managed to get our hands on but he's just the wrong player for our club at this time mm. and again goes back to recruitment doesn't it? Well, I also I also don't think he's necessarily suited to the system we're playing like he's yeah. got quite a pivotal role. But in you that could sp- but it's the same for Puki. Pookie's not benefiting from this system either, is he? No. It? We need someone in there who will get gritty and will dig holes and really dig in. You need two... Well, you need two Matthias Normans, don't you? You need three. <laughs> Maybe more. Full team. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Gilmore's the type of man, labourer, who turns up to a building site, yeah. right, yeah. and comes home and there's no dust on his overalls. And you've gone, have, have you actually done a day's work? <laughs> no, that's harsh. No, it's not. <laughs> that's he'll, harsh. He'll, he'll make a nice that's cup harsh. of tea. Yeah. And he'll go about things and, yeah. and, and look nice. Yeah. But has he actually got the work done, Chris? I don't know. <laughs> look, I, look I, I, I mean, I bet, I bet I feel John, bad. John with a kit man. I bet there's not too much mm. mud on them kits. I feel bad for Billy because, as I say, I do think he's a talented lad. I do think he's got a very bright future. I just think for Norwich, it doesn't. It doesn't look good. I love. It doesn't look good. And I, do, do you know what I want as well? Sorry, forgive me. You go. I really miss Oliver Skip. That's all I was going to say. Okay, fine. Really miss. Yeah, him, I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm bored of that. Like chat. an ex-girlfriend, I'm He's not done. over. He's done. Um, do you mean he's done? Uh, do you know what I'm quite up for now? Let me know in the comment section if you agree with this. Lungi. Mm. <clears throat> Again, Chris. <clears throat> I go back to. <clears throat> I go back to the. Go on. Uh, Stick him in there. I go back to the Norman, Kyle Lafferty effect. Norman, Lungi. Mm. The it, Danish duck, he mops everything up. It, it always happens. The players who aren't playing yes, suddenly I know. get better. Yes, I know. Mind. Yes, I know. It is this Kyle Lafferty effect. Yeah, maybe it is. You're right. Lungi, good player. Is he going to solidify the midfield against, against Liverpool? No. Well, but he didn't. He's yeah, not. But, that, but the. But no, he's not, Chris. Right? Okay, Come out of no, no, I'll Planet I'll Cuckoo that. Land. I'll take that on And let's get some Twitter questions. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Let's do Lots Twitter questions. of Twitter questions. 57 questions sent in on Twitter. Yep, yeah, go on. Some of them statements, some of them questions, some of them life Fif- advice. 50 questions. Required. Christ. How long is this podcast going to go on for tonight? As long as it takes. Go on then. Let's go. Start from the top. Um, I don't like doing that. Oh, do you randomise it? Yeah, I just flick through and have a look. Go Cam. On. Cam who? Cam, we know Cam. Cam? Cam. Oh, Cam. Hello, Cam. Cam, Cam. Cam. Cam the man. Cam the man. I'm Pookie's biggest supporter and have always defended it. This is by no means a tarnish on his undisputed quality. I think this could well be a tarnish on his undisputed quality. (laughs) But. 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 Is he still the man best suited to Norris City in their approach to games? Mm. He fit Daniel Farker's role perfectly off the shoulder. 
Not sure he's the right man for Dean Smith. Well, Cameron, he's the only strike we've bloody got, so he better fit the system. Well, look, I think he'll I think he'll score goals for fun in the championship again. I do. I do. I th- Why don't you just say it? you don't think he's good enough for the Premier League? Why don't you just grow some balls and say it? Because I do because you're think dancing he's good enough. around at the moment. You're sat on because the Because I do think he's because we've seen Pookie score goals in the Premier League before. So what's making you doubt him at this current moment? Because, because you are. No. Uh, well, first of all, Cam, to address you, Cam, and not not this rude bloke. Um I agree with you in the sense of Pookie currently isn't um potent in this current system. But don't forget He's not getting chances. But don't forget that our recruitment this summer was based around bringing in two wingers, mm. yeah, that would that would stretch teams out wide for the cutbacks. Arguably for Pookie. Now we've only got one of those sides sorted in Milo. He's actually been in and out of the team at the start of the season as well. So we've mishmashed systems, we've changed gaffers, we've been demolished. Confidence is lacked. We've had injuries that therefore have meant that we've not had the the service Pookie. And yeah, do you know what? This is sounding like I'm making up excuses. It's because I am. Because he's a club legend. I do believe in him. Every time I've written Pookie off, which by the way hasn't been that often, he's gone and delivered. So maybe this is a good thing because he'll score against Southampton away. Mark my words. I th- I, Pookie winner. I, I think the difficulty we have to uh, understand. What's he scored this season? Six goals? Seven goals? Uh, something I like can that. find out. Six actually. goals, I think. He's scored something the, like in terms of percentage of goals for a club, the most contributions to any club in the Premier League. And he doesn't get that many chances. He uh, really doesn't. Six, six, six goals. Six Premier League goals. That's not a terrible return. If Weghorst has got that at Burnley, you've, everyone's raving it's, about him. Mm, it's still not good enough. He scored six like, goals at this stage for your main striker isn't good enough. He scored like seventy percent of our goals, sixty percent of our yeah, goals. Yeah, I know because so then it goes back to we're recruitment not cre- again. We're over reliant on Pookie. Yeah, we saw this last time when he had that, that toe injury against against Leicester. We were fucked. You say that about bringing in wingers, and that was the, that was the the idea. That was the uh, recruitment. Yeah, he's not. He doesn't play well with wingers. He's the majority of his goals mm, have come came through from the Emmy Buendia, yeah, Todd yeah, Cantwell yeah. from deep, off the shoulder. Now, two things mm. to note here. Buendia's gone, so yeah. the chances created from him aren't there anymore. Yeah. Right? We haven't got an Emmy Buendia type player. Yeah. And he's also lost a yard of pace. He's yeah. not as yeah. quick as he was in behind, yeah. right? Yeah. A couple of things there. Um, but I think it's only doors though, right? Got. But people, but, but, but I think Pookie's been good this season. But I'm going to put. Let's put the ma- at the moment, right? I call it the. Ma- I call this the magnifying glass, right? At the moment, the magnifying glass is over Pookie because he missed the sitter against Liverpool. Oh, it was one yeah? chance. But next week it will be I don't know Grant Hanley because he I don't know made a mistake for a, hopefully not for a Southampton goal. It's the magnifying glass, right? P- everyone's talking about Pookie at the moment. Pookie will be fine. Pookie's the least of our worries. Our major worries have been defending, yeah, misshapen all over the place. We saw it against Liverpool on a couple of occasions, by the way. And the midfield has been chopped and changed so many times that at times it's non-existent. So yeah. I, I, I think Pookie is the least of our worries. Yeah, the he, mid- Ultimately, he needed supporting Jack and he was let down. He wasn't supported. And even and I'm Adam Eder's biggest fan. Biggest fan, right? I've had plenty of debates about it on Twitter. But you can't be relying on Adam Eder to or, instant now, to he? instantly hit the ground running on the Premier League to support Pookie, mm. and then we've not had that through Josh. So, yeah. yeah. Um, at the midfield is the is the concern. I think defensively we've got the players. Yes. I think across the across that whole back line, we've got the players. The midfield one, I don't yeah. think we know our, the best shape, and two, I don't think we've got adequate quality there. Well, either. I would also challenge that, and because 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 I think. What is, we bought. We we bought. Why did we bring Kabak in? Kabak's clearly not hit 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 the road. Well, I think because season. Gibson and Hanley have been good in the last month or so. Yeah. Okay. Right. No. No. no I know that. But but we've signed Kabak in to bolster our defence, and he's not played any football. So. Yeah. yeah. Now I need to send an apology once again to Run Cycle Cake on Twitter. <laughs> what did you uh, call it? Run Run Clee Cake. Didn't? Run Run. Run, run click cake. Yeah, you, you, you really. Uh, he says, uh, first question uh, capitals in Twitter handles are overrated. Uh, <laughs> they're not. Uh, question two are there enough goals in our team to stay up? The defence is far better under Dean Smith. Yes. Um, but still struggling in front of goal, in my opinion. I mean, it's hard to disagree yeah. with that. Yeah. Well, well um, I think people probably know that I'm not, you know, 
I think I, th- I think I'm I'm now fairly open with it that I was really ready to move on from Daniel Farker because we were just waving the white flag again, um, and I still feel like unfortunately we are shaking off a lot of the old habits that that we'd forged under his leadership, mm. um, and one of those is that soft, so soft, and we were against Liverpool, weren't we? We didn't do the basics. How did we not sprint back when we know that we've got Mane and Salah? I, 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 I can't fathom it I can't um, but it's going to take time I've got every faith by the way in Dean Smith mm. I've got so much faith in Dean Smith to, to, to not only give us actually still still even though the mood is low right now a really good chance of survival I think it's going to be down to the wire I really, really do I really do I think at the moment the confidence is low but I've got every faith that Dino can string a few results together, big results, and I really do. And, and, and actually, even if we go down, I know that Dino will get us back up. Well, this leads nicely onto Joshua's question. Joshua Daplin, mm. he, his bio, Canaries, yeah. Gaming. Oh, Joshua, yeah, top friends. man, top man, by the way. What, what more do you need in life than Canaries, Gaming, Friends? Maybe a, maybe a crate of Lakers. Yeah, he said hello at the Barclay, so hello, hello oh, again. Um, hi, lads. Um, where do you think we'd be in the table if D- if we were under Dino from the start of the season? Um, I think we'd be 15th. Yeah, just below mid-table. Just below mid-table for me. I do. Look, I, I, have, I, mean, got, what, what, I have got my bias, yellow and green, Dino. I, th- I don't think we'd be in the bottom on. three. No, I don't either. If, Ten if, games without a win at the start. I'm, I'm not sure if this is included in, in, in Joshua's question, but if Dino had the transfer window as well, I think he would have looked very different. Mm. I think he would look would have looked very different. And I think and I th- but look, hindsight is yeah that's is, true is because he's still thing, he's so. still got Daniel Farker's squad. Yeah, well and Stuart Webber's squad. Not yeah, not absolutely. Just yeah. Farker. So so let's let's you know I, I think if Dino has a transfer with pr- an actual transfer window, which at Norwich is only the summer window, um, then then I then I think we would have done much better and we will do much better in the future. A little bit greedy from Joshua. Getting a second question in. Kind of rate it. If you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah, absolutely. Um, With Dino preferring uh, Jonathan Rowe give it a go to Christos Jolis Mm. and him not even making the bench, could this be the end of Christos Jolis at the football club? I understand if he's not quite ready yet, but surely the only way to get him ready is to play him. Look, we mentioned it in our last podcast, the mystery of Zolis. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's happened what we do know is that we've spent at least nine million pounds on this player and at Norwich City Football Club you cannot afford to spend nine million on a player that's and, a couple of soccer and not and not just go wrong but not play them. Mm. Like that's a worry. It's a worry that two managers have said have, have, have decided that. Mm. Um I, I always I think I feel like I'm saying this a lot at the moment. Um I, I think if, if Zollis stays he would he would Tear up the championship. What I think he's too good to for the championship that? because we haven't seen. Um, because we, yeah, well, we saw him against Bournemouth and he was exceptional. Yeah, but that was a cut. second team. All right, fair enough. I've got no evidence. It's just, just like, it's just blind faith. Yeah. I fancy Zollis to tear it up in the championship. Same with Sargent. He needs a season in the championship, by the way, as well, to get his confidence back. Um, but yeah, but it's, it it's, a, it's a, a mystery. It seems a worry. It's a mystery and a mistake and a worry that Zollis isn't even making the bench, but. Good for Jonathan Rowe, give it a go. We do love a bit of Jonathan Rowe here on Talk Yeah, City. but the fact of the, the matter was, I think Zimmerman made the bench on Saturday, I may be wrong, mm-hmm. and we, we hardly had an attacking substitute on the bench. Yeah, well, we had we haven't got anyone. And, well, we've, uh, that's what I'm saying, get Jollis on the bench Yeah. instead of Zimmerman. I don't know. Hmm. I, hope, I hope something's going on Yeah, there. maybe the journalists will be able to ask Dino those questions. Jameson Gray... Go on. Regency season ticket holder. Yeah, City yes. till I yeah. die. I hope you bloody sing in that stand. Yeah. I really do. Sing up the bloody yeah. Regency security. Ser- seriously sing up the Regency security. Statement. Yeah, good. About time. These next few games are must win if we want to stay in the Premier League. All three of these next three yes. games. Okay. Well, few. So I assume two. I think he probably means three. I agree. Three. All three must win. Well, we're five points adrift, nah. and we've played a game more than Newcastle. Okay, that worries me. Okay, I think we need to go through the next three unbeaten. Yeah, I like that from you. Two wins and a. I like a it, draw. but it doesn't satisfy me. I, I, I want. I want obviously, I want three wins ideally. I think I would take. I'd take a draw at Southampton now yeah. because they're in fine form. Yeah, I'd take it. Um, How lucky was that win at home, by the way, um, Southampton? 
Their goalkeeper was horrific. <gasps> Their, that was the worst goalkeeping performance I've seen at Norwich in a long time. He was bad. We were lucky he? that day. He was bad. Yeah. He was really bad, but it's great for Norwich, obviously. Um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, Brentford at home, we really need... I think Brentford is a must win. We have to. I've slagged them off so much this season. We have to beat Brent, them. And do you know what? There's nothing more that would give me so much joy than beating Brentford at home. Really drag I'd, them into it. I would love to see the look on Frank's face. By the way, I tell you, I'll give you something else after that, yeah? Who's after that? Leeds, mm. yeah? Leeds aren't winning a game. They're not winning a game until we play them. What, and then they're beating us? Say we beat Leeds... Well, they're in the shit oh. so let's have some of that so Brentford Hasht- and Leeds could be in with hashtag welcome Norwich let's go yeah. boys yeah. yeah let's go yeah I like that Jameson also asks uh, he's got a question what's bigger Dino's <laughs> Dino's chopper <laughs> oh, great. and his forehead <laughs> only the serious stuff here yeah, on TNC definitely Dino's from chopper from Ben Gibson's insight into the tactical yeah. Uh, yeah to Dino's chopper chat yeah mm. it's big isn't it Dino's chopper I've said it before. I'll say it. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Dean Smith has got the biggest chopper in the Premier League. <laughs> Sam, quite a good question from Sam. Yeah, we'll give it a seven out of ten. Go on. Um, season ticket holder in the snake pit, so we don't want to mess with Sam. Oh wow, um, jeez. Reckon Can't he owns at least Be one careful. Stone Island garment. Uh, <laughs> who's one ex Norwich City player yeah. in their prime? Yeah. Who you think would fit perfectly in the current team to help us stay up? <laughs> Bloody hell. That's a really tough question because of the fact that we've chopped and changed it around so much. I'll give you one. And Go on. It's the only right answer here. Go on. Bradley Johnson. Oh. Just a bit of grit. I love that man. Just a bit of, him, you know, I would, anger. I would turn for that man. Yeah. I literally love Bradley Johnson so much. Him leaving, him and Malky, they both broke my heart. And it broke my heart when he told us that he didn't want to leave as well. Um, Gary Holt. Three lungs. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, I'm yeah, the you going there. You know, a, a proper engine room, um, gets gets about box to box well. Um, I think would almost be what I, I'd have Gary Holt there in, instead of Billy Gilmore at the moment. Yeah, like mm. that. Like where you're going there. Mm. About time you came up with some sense. Um, David Jeffries, I'm going to yeah. read this out because yeah, you'll on. like this. Yeah, okay. Um, I like his bio. Yeah, Honest. On. Incredibly boring, no particular interests, <laughs> old before my time, eat too much pizza. <laughs> okay. We need more of that on social. David Jeffries, um, welcome to David the David Jeffries, yeah, clearly on. grumpy yeah. and a grumpy question here. We'll better be careful. We're then. 2 1 down. Yeah. Alison handballs outside of the area, yeah. not on any highlights. Correct. Should have been a red card yes. and a free kick. Go on! Coach. Typical big team bias. There it is. Why was it not checked by VAR and Pookie not in the ref's face? Interesting. Uh, about yeah. it so much he got booked himself potential game changer okay that's a, well we didn't think we didn't is that your burner account? we didn't bring that out <laughs> no it's not we didn't bring that out though did we the, the, the Norris players aren't but but then I quite like that it's a bit wanky isn't it but you were, we're you not, were saying when, last when, week when how we were nasty Norris rest. now and now we've turned into yeah maybe they didn't they didn't do it in that position did they I don't know I still think we 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 lost the game it's we not were well bit, beaten yeah, VR yeah. doesn't hate us just, it does oh, just eat no. some pizza David chill out have a beer do what you need to do to chill out we'll win next week we just, just calm yeah. down I feel like we all need to ride this storm and stay patient and anyway when we when we do go down we won't have VAR next season mm. <laughs> cheers to that by the way yeah have cheers, you finished your beer cheers to relegation have you finished your beer nearly yeah, pretty much. It's so nice, isn't it? David Spud Thornhill. Mm. Jack, mm. have a rethink. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, good. Go on. Spud. Go on, Spud. I really don't want to send for you, Spud, but... Yeah, go on. Jack. Spud's giving it to you here. Have a rethink on staying up or winning the FA Cup. That was a question last week. Would yeah, you rather stay up or yeah, win yeah, the yeah. FA Cup? Well, I said we'll do both. And obviously, but David would rather win hasn't. the Cup. Listen, I know you both were not alive in 1985, correct? But winning the cup in 85, more memorable than staying up in 83 and 84. Yeah, okay. Plus, we went down and won the league in 86. Yeah. 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 I'd take that again. Spud's well, right. Spud. Spud's right. I sus- You've Spud's lost your, your postman, way. isn't he? Yes. Is Spud the type of man that when he's delivering your letters? Well, was my postman. Oh, has he gone? Yeah, he's, he's hung up his posting now. Has he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's changed his he's job. He's become a serial Twitter man. Le- legend, though. Absolutely. Right. Legend. All I'm saying is, You're wrong. I'm looking at this as a responsible fan. 
No, you're right? not. Yes, I am. And let, you're a boring, can you let me speak? You're a boring... You no, no, you're a boring modern-day fan. Well, is what I, you I am saying... I'd rather stay out the window cup. There's glory. Cups. Yes. Silverware. But Spud will be the first to moan when we go down, right? I don't think he will, to be We fair. need... No, he probably won't be. <laughs> but he said for me, so I'm coming back, yeah, right? We need to stay up for any chance right. of long-term survival in the Premier League. Right, let me give you a situation. Scrap the cup. Right, well, let the me cup tell. doesn't care about well, let, us. Well, let me, and we don't care about the no, cup. No, wrong. You don't care about the cup because you're anti-cup. You think the FA Cup cares about let you? Me put, let me plant this seed in your head, yeah? I think, it's the, I think it's a disgrace. We go back to Anfield in a week <sighs> or so. Why did you breath to bring that up? Yeah. Well, let me plant and this seed in your head. we get pumped again. No, no. Well, just hypothetically speaking, <laughs> if we beat Liverpool in the cup... <laughs> yes. That's going to get you going. Yes, but... Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Do you know what? If we beat Liverpool away in the cup, that's going to give us so much belief in the league. And by the way, we've got a cup run. And by the way, we know that Gibbo wants it. And by the way, we'll get an easier draw next time out. Yes, and then we go down. I mean, there's no Wigan fans. How do you know you'll go down? How do you know you'll go down? Because we're sacrificing... Those Those Wigan fans will say that was the best day of their life. Oh, now look at them in League One because of that cup run. That is they were nonsense. spread so thin That's the following nonsense. season couldn't get themselves That's back nonsense. up. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. Anyway, Jack's anti-cup. Let's move on. I, I am. Yeah, fine. Good. D- d- it's d- about time you owned it. The, the cup, I've owned it all the while. The cup needs to do more for clubs like this, for us. Give us, give us a reason to go and win it. Yeah? <laughs> That's the one thing I quite liked about Daniel Farker towards the end. Didn't care about the cup. <laughs> <laughs> well... Well, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Right, Jamie. Yeah, go on. Jamie who? Jamie Lauder. Yeah, good. Nice. Good old boy. I hate it when teams give me hope. The excitement of going 1-0 up to have that taken away is heartbreaking. I I hear you, Jamie. But you know what? We always have one iconic win, and I thought that was going to be It's better to have lived and loved than to have never loved at all, Jamie. Yeah, good. Yeah? Yeah, good. For that 10 minutes, we dared to dream. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We felt it. Whatever it was, we and felt for that, it. No one can take them 10 minutes away from us. <laughs> they were a good 10 minutes. Yeah, we had a fun 10 Those minutes. Those 10 minutes, I was, it was popping off in yeah. the Reeve household. I'll tell you that for free. Good. It really was. Good. <laughs> 10 minutes, long time. <sighs> Onwards. Jesus Christ. Yes, quickly. Jaden. <laughs> Yes. Mm, a little curveball from Jaden. Yeah, there. gone. He's throwing us a good Yeah, sticking the spice uh, in there. A little, little off seam to the fucking <laughs> forward, uh, forward bat there. Jaden, <laughs> statement. If we sell Todd Cantwell, yeah. can we use that money on getting Williams in permanently? I don't know, Jaden. I think that... Jaden's acting like I'm Stuart Webber. That's very easy math. We could. But it's not going to happen. We're not going to sign Brandon. He'll be back to Manchester United. Hundred percent. Such a cool Manchester joy. boy. I'm sorry. I've said it. Time. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna move on this. I'm not gonna move on this. Plus, we've got Dimmy. Brandon Williams will go back to Manchester United. Hundred percent. I would be. I would be stunned if we somehow sign Brandon Williams. Stunned. Monty. Question. Chris. To me. Specifically yes, me. To you. Okay. Would you rather have to watch Ipswich play every single week? Or to only be allowed to eat picnic bars in Great Yarmouth for the rest of your life? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> for the rest of my life? Mm. So I've got to watch Ipswich for the rest of my life yeah. or live in Yarmouth, in Yarmouth. I can only eat picnic oh, bars. It has, it has, it, it, as, much as, as much as that dents my, my, my ego on this, and I'd, I'll pick picnic bars in Yarmouth. Oh, I will. Okay. Because it's a good option. It's a good, it's it's a happy life doing that. No, it's not. It's certainly not. It's certainly not. Finn Stevens. Yeah, gone. Has woken up. Is there and... another Yarmouth question, by the way? Yeah, there will be. Okay. <laughs> Finn Stevens. I've just got a couple of points to bring up with you. Woke up and chose violence this morning. Did he? Gone. Is this summer the time to move on from Timu Puki? Again, I love the. Bloke. There's a lot of comments about Timu. I love isn't the bloke, there? and when he will always be a club legend because you're fueling the hate, Chris. But at this point, I'm starting to feel he limits the way we play. No, he doesn't limit the way we play, but he doesn't benefit from the way we play. And we need to be feeding the goat. Feed the goat and he will score. Well, actually, arguably not, because we fed him against Liverpool. We fed him once. We fed him the starter and left the main and the dessert. Yeah, that's true. We gave him a bit of a... 
bit of a prawn cocktail. Yeah. And he didn't finish it. We we gave him the sorbet. Yeah. Yeah. Cleansed the taste buds, and then gave him no follow up food, and he was left wanting more. He does need more chances. I think that's harsh. But what is interesting is the quantity of comments on Team Impuki. Dino needs to solve this problem. It's recency bias. Yes, agreed. Right, come on. You're dying to bring up your question. Right. Go on. What is it? Well, Jack, I've um, been alerted. Oh, here we go. To I've what? Been alerted to not one, hmm. but two pieces of major breaking news <laughs> okay. in Yarmo. Okay. How we're one of the thriving coastal destinations in Norfolk. No. How business is on the up. No. How the green energy industry is thriving. You're like bloody Boris Johnson, you are. Um, oh, God, I just spoke about politics. I promised I wouldn't do that. Too late. Um, right. The news this week coming out of Yarmo is there is a major problem <laughs> with bird shit. <laughs> And I have giggled about this, and I've giggled about this, and I've really giggled about this. <laughs> I really have. A further plea for action has been issued to try and solve the problem of starling mess covering Great Yarmouth homes and cars. People living there and surrounded roads are fed up of having to clean their properties and vehicles from the mess left from a huge flock of starlings. <laughs> Great Yarmouth Borough Council has employed a laser device. This is what has really got me giggling. Great Yarmouth Council have employed a laser device to try and scare off the flock nesting in trees in Yarmouth. But so far there's no sign of the birds moving on. I just can't get my head around the fact that Great Yarmouth not only have got birds deciding to shit all over your horrible little hole, but also they've brought in a laser. So that's I'll, cruelty to animals. Well, so I'll 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 tell you why. Go on. So Yarmouth is a, a hotbed for wildlife. It has everything they need. Oh, the bed. nutrients, the coast. Yeah, it is a hotbed for wildlife. Um, I'll tell you why in a minute. <laughs> um, so birds yeah. want to be there, right? Yeah, and yeah, the wrong type of birds. I was doing some research as well. And I went to my trusted news provider, the BBC, and I found that your beloved city of the of the of the fine city of Norwich, yes, are advocates yeah. of animal cruelty. <laughs> oh, come off it. Birds nesting at Tesco. <laughs> After nets removed at Norwich store, swallows have been seen nesting outside of the supermarket weeks after nets yeah. to keep the yeah. birds away. Yeah. Well, they're not shitting everywhere. Were are removed. They? But they're now, not shitting it everywhere. Took, Why did birds it just... took the RSPCA, a well formed <laughs> animal, anti animal cruelty charity, to get rid of these disgusting nets Why? outside of this Tesco's but, in Norwich but, because you put nets but, upsa- outside no. to <laughs> trap these poor, innocent right. birds. What would you rather, nets or lasers? So you would rather kill and trap the birds you've, inside of nets literally... and that's happening in your very city. You have put lasers up. Kill them quick. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't compare. Anyway, I knew this was coming. I knew that this defence was coming. So I went and sought <laughs> after an expert in the field and I spoke expert to a, of who? I spoke Starlings. I spoke to an I spoke to a hang on I've had a I've had a Lakens an ornithological person what? I don't know what it means Jack Wright basically and what's he's an, an ornithological an expert, he's an expert in birds basically which we all need to be from time to time um, and he said Chris drop me a DM for an impartial opinion. Oh, what? Anyway, Swallow he then... In Norwich, of course, we have the peregrine falcons nesting on the cathedral. Uh, Jack describes this as the plahettas of the world, uh, of the bird world, rapid, who keep starling numbers down. Ask Jack how the peregrines on Yarmouth Cathedral are doing. No response to that, obviously. But this is the key information. This is the key information. Did you know that starlings, the starlings that are shitting all over Yarmouth as we speak, are red listed by the RSPB, meaning they're of the highest conservation concern. 
so they are basically endangered, meaning that residents of Yarmouth cannot do anything to get rid of them. They'll just have to live with them. Why, why do we want to get rid of them? We want to live no, at no, peace. No, no. We want to live so, at peace so with the nature. What, so here's what you're doing at the moment. You are endangering a endangered species. You put lasers up. No, we're, we're just up. letting them live. Lasers. We're letting them live. No, you're not letting them live. You're letting them shit. Now, shit all over your town. Uh, unlike certain news providers, I like to bring the truth here on Talk Norwich City. And it feels as if we have been engulfed by a liar. <laughs> now, I don't know who you've been speaking to there. He says that Norwich, the fine, the fine city, doesn't have problems with birds. Who are you speaking to? Well, I refer you to a um, Norwich Evening News article dated on July the 21st, 2021, Norwich Evening with the News. top line, calls have been made for a solution to be found for chip-hungry seagulls that oh, have, bl- no, that have blighted no, no, the city no. market right. for years. Well, pardon the pun, but I'm about to shit all over <laughs> you because... I look at have, this because I this is game set match for you. <laughs> this is game set match. In actual fact, I'm going to really, really get you right in it here. So the great Yarmouth Mercury, <laughs> of course, of of, of your own um, parish ends, um, says that people. And this article was released just last week. In fact, um, I might have bent the truth there. People in the seaside town are being reminded not to be gullible and feed the birds in a crackdown on the nuisance seagulls. Recent years have seen an upturn in complaints after the nuisance seagulls. These seagulls are everywhere in Yarmouth. They are causing havoc. And in actual fact, and here's the game set match, ladies and gents. I gave Jack time to prepare today and I sent him a link to the article saying... You're in trouble later on. And Jack's response was as follows. <laughs> Actually, there's a few I can't read out. <laughs> the seagulls are fucking dreadful, to be fair. <laughs> this is from me. They're getting bigger. They are. They're honestly massive. I had a full sausage baguette stolen out of my hand once, and it was traumatising. Horrible things. Rats on wings. So... Yeah, I despise seagulls. So, Yarmouth has got a problem with shitting birds, shitting all over your town. And why have they chosen to shit all over your town? Because it's great Yarmouth. (laughs) I think the thing between us and a true man is a man that owns one's problems. You are so deluded. (laughs) About what? The fine city? The fact that Norwich, the fine city, must be put in quotation marks. It has no problems. We are squeaky clean. No problem. Your market is inundated with seagulls. Now I Norwich will... market over Yarmouth market all day long. Easily. At the moment, I would sadly have to agree. What has, hounsel, what has happened to our uh, market is nothing short of Inevitable. a disgrace. Um, but um, uh, we can agree that seagulls are horrible creatures. Well, we don't and have they any are issues with genu- seagulls in Norwich. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Well, they're everywhere, but they're not as everywhere as Yarm. It's because we're a coastal town. I don't see any like you don't have it. a beach in Norwich, You're do you? Under attack. It's a seagull. Where's the sea in Norwich? Ukraine are under attack by Russia. Great Yarmouth are under attack by seagulls. Mm. I don't see anything like it. That's true. Yeah, it's true. Anyway, so there you go. There's our Yarmouth debate of the week. So I didn't know sparrows were in. Uh, 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 what did he say? Starlings. 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 Sorry. What did I say? Yeah. Sparrow. I just can't believe, well, I can believe it. They're not I, nice either. I find it incredibly funny that Starlings have chosen to shit all over your town. Why have they chosen because to Because it's a nice your... place to come. They're, 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 they're holidaying <laughs> there. They're holidaying there, Chris. They have to poo somewhere. They haven't got their own toilet, have they? I just, I just really don't like how clearly for animal cruelty you are. It's <laughs> good. <laughs> Oh, God. Should we get one more question? <laughs> yes, quickly. <laughs> God. A, f- a, few of our, a few of our listeners have really angered me this week, actually. <laughs> Spud. Spud's angered me. Oh. Who, whoever you were talking to is angered mm. me for blatantly lying. <laughs> <laughs> yep, good. <sighs> right. You are stressed, aren't Yeah, you? I am annoyed, actually. Get, get yourself over to I am cities. annoyed. Get yourself a little back or shoulder rub, <laughs> I yeah? Do, I do need a little rub, yeah, actually. Yeah, you do, don't you? Um, right, let's get one more question. And let's go... <laughs> Why do people tune into this? <laughs> I'll never know. 
If you've watched until this point, as always, as mm. I say every week now, thank you. Take a picture of your screen, tag Talk Not a City, and say hashtag Seagulls in Yarmo. Hashtag Seagulls in Yarmo. I want to see evidence that you've got to this point. Hashtag Seagulls in Yarmo. I'll retweet all of them as thanks for your support. Robert. Yes. Favourite ever Caro Road moment. Bloody hell. Mm. Cool. That's question of the pod, isn't it? Favourite ever Caro ever, ever. Well, I guess since we've been there. <clears throat> I mean, iconic oh, is surely yeah. Delia, isn't it? What? In terms of an iconic moment. Your favourite ever no, moment I'm is saying, Delia being pissed. I'm saying, I, pitch. well, quite fun. That's your favourite no, ever not, moment? I'm just saying it was an iconic oh, on moment. Your, go on then, get your, get your good Favourite ever moment. Give it to me. I would say... Go on. A bit, I mean, pumping Ipswich every time is good fun, but that's yeah. happened so often it's not really that unique It's anymore. almost boring. I think solely for like... Un- unexpectedness and sheer fun mm. that Pookie hat trick in the Premier League was really fun against, against Newcastle. Newcastle yeah because it's random yeah it just popped into my head we weren't expecting <clears> it <throat> it was sunny yeah oh it was and we were the talk of the, the world not just the town the world yeah we were to be fair and for that weekend yeah. Norwich City were fucking massive <laughs> mate we are we always yeah, are we always, we always are we always have been but for that you know weekend was, in particular. Do you know what? I was watching the game with, with, with Becky. Mm. Um, and I'd turn around and say, God, we're massive. We are massive. Yeah. We're such a big football club. <laughs> and then the two goals went in. Okay. Um, anyway. Right. I think, I think, I still think Man City at home was. Yeah. Because as you say, it would be easy for me to say the Ipswich game mm. because of the fact that their Ipswich, right? And well, you say rivals. game, games. But it's so easy. Mm. It, it's become boring. Like, I don't even miss it because it was so easy. Yeah. It was like playing Aberystwyth. It was just, it was, it was just so, they were so Why shit. have you gone with Aberystwyth? They were terrible. I've never once, never once been scared of them, ever. Mm. Well, I have back in the day when I was a tiny, tiny kid. Um, and you're old, so that was a long while ago. Yeah, exactly. I'm 93. Um, I think Man City at home was was unbelievable. David versus Goliath, um, you know, under the floodlight. It was phenomenal. The atmosphere was electric. It was just an incredible memory. I also think when we beat Ipswich in the playoff semi-final mm. was particularly juicy because, of course, you know, going onto the pitch after the game, etc. That was this world class. <coughs> What about when we won the league? Is that the Starling? Was it Blackburn? Sh- is that the Starling <coughs> shit stuck in your throat? Sorry. Black was it Blackburn? Sheffield Wednesday, no. 1 0. Branchic, hello. Was it or was it Blackburn? Have I, I got that wrong? Have I got that wrong? I think well Sheffield Wednesday <coughs> wasn't 1 0. Was it not? I think it was 2 2. Oh, sorry. But Blackburn oh, yeah, I right. think was the game we clinched the title. Yeah. That was fun. Was that, that was a Friday night, was I think. That Marco Stephen, did he score? Yeah. I think he scored that, didn't he? That was fun. I remember go- Remember, I'll tell yeah, you, you'll never guess. I'll give you two guesses and you won't get Which it. Which is why I respect Daniel Farker for what he's done so much, because of those incredible memories. Where did I go for a beer after that game? You are always on the beers, so... Just have a guess, you won't get it. All of the brilliant pubs in Norwich and where did I end up? The brilliant pubs in Norwich? Better yeah. than Yarmouth, aren't they? No, they? I'm, I'm... Yeah, they are, they are, yeah, they are. Um, I reckon you went to, I don't know, some hellhole, I don't know. I'll give you a clue, it wasn't a pub. Did you go to... No, 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 no. no. Shaky and Spice. <laughs> <laughs> no. Go Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> Hollywood Bowl? <laughs> I don't know why. You went to Hollywood Bowl? For drinks. But quite frankly, after you've done that... We were pitch, bowling the championship you? over. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Mm. Right. Big game next week. Well, yeah. this week. Yeah, so next, next three are... Absolutely ginormous. Huge. Southampton away, must not lose. Brentford at home, must win. She- uh, Sheffield. Leeds away, must not and lose. And that's a Sunday now. Have you seen must that? Must not lose. It's on a Sunday. Yeah. So annoying. Yeah. I'm not surprised. It's the Premier League. Mm. Good pod this week. Was it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. You decide. Let us know in the YouTube section as always. Thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. I'll tell you what, it was a good podcast. Mm. Go on. And this is factual. Nothing to do with feelings. Lakens. 
yeah, people always. have got the chance to either get Lakens yes. at a heavily discounted price yes. or win a case. Don't forget the competition, people. Retweet the podcast launch tweet. Mm. We'll share it on um, on Facebook and also our our Instagram account. And also, if you share it on all three platforms, that's an entry on each. So cool. just get involved. Oof. There you go. I've revealed the secrets now. Basically. Get involved on all platforms. Share it everywhere. Tag Talk Norwich City. And you may win not just a mixed case of Lakens, oh, yeah. but a Ben Gibson signed player card. Imagine winning both. Yeah. Well, it could happen. Wow. It could happen. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week yes. after a win against Southampton. And we will be saying that we're the best team in the world. Of course. See you later.